So first of all, I'm not René Schneider, <laughs> who was sick, so I'm his substitute. I'm, uh, my name is Heiko, I'm the managing director of Iconic Skin, which is part of the Sealy Group. So let's see where, it, where we're going. So what, what I want to uh, talk today is about a uh, brief about double skin facades, which is getting more popular and there is a trend of the requirement of these facade types in future. Due to the performance, I don't want to go into the explanation why we need double skin facades, higher wind loads, higher buildings, so we need this definitely. And there are several types of these facades and therefore we need to find the best solution for its application. So I want to talk generally about the uh, fundamentals. What is a double skin facade? Then uh, have pick some examples, the closed cavity facade, the self-conditioning facade and our new development, which is another valid portion and uh, different acting double facade. Then give a few examples and uh, what's the future? So generally, fundamentals. So if you see that, double skin facade, good performance, protected sunscreens, but if you close a cavity, you get issues. You get issues of climate loads from the interior, from the exterior, heat is going, blowing up, so you have two risks. The risk is the breakage of the glass. The other risk is uh, the, the infiltration of the sealant, of the boot tile. So, so we need to find something to get rid of these, uh, these issues. What's the solution? There are different types. I don't want to go into the details of everything. The standard open double skin facade, which is ventilated all through the facade. There is a ventilation only in one single unit. There is completely different types. There is now curtain walls acting or sunshades acting as double skin facades. But I want to uh, concentrate on a self-conditioning facade, which I will explain further. Uh, the closed cavity facade, which is a pressurized system, and then uh, our new system, what we've developed. So the design in general, closed cavity facade. Uh, we have a closed cavity. And to get rid of uh, any, any pressure and any uh, breakages of glass, we, you simply connect um, uh, a piping system where you blow in uh, dried air, conditioned air, and you have a certain uh, leakage rate and you have, that you uh, satisfy that there's always an overpressure in your facade and you're free of condensation and free of issues. So the concept is, but you have a calculation for the required uh, amount of air, you require steelwork piping, you require uh, a special treatment. Once it's finished in the shop, you have a temporary air connected to it to avoid condensation until it gets out on site and till the storage. So the other things, design challenges, as I said, you uh, have to calculate this, you have to condition uh, the supply chain during transport out on site until it's connected to the final system and uh, that requires logistics uh, uh, and uh, and several other items what uh, these facades have like material compatibility like uh, uh, fogging resistant materials you can't use everything inside a, of a closed cavity facade so I just want to show very quick example because Martin showed this yesterday that was built, but I show this because it's an unconventional facade. I personally was involved in this facade in Hong Kong where we had glass tubes used as a closed cavity facade, something different like these standard towers. So, so we had tubes and we had the same filter system, we had the same calculation required and added this and it's still functioning as a, as a proper system. So what else do we have? The self-conditioning facade. Once we had the closed cavity facades, we started 10 years ago with engineering. What can we do without having a, a pipe connected and with a self-conditioning system, building on principles of the, of the physics instead of having an operational system? So we developed a system, the self-conditioning facade, which had a, an opening. We not allow for a constant airflow, but we allow for an air exchange. The big difference to a closed cavity facade is we had an opening. So the biggest risk is condensation that happens to the system. So all we had to do was engineer with a certain build up of the IGUs that I have always a slightly higher temperature inside the cavity than the exterior temperature so that we satisfy that the dew point is always uh, uh, lower. And so we try to avoid condensation. Uh, the facade has its application fields. It won't work in humid areas, so we could never use this in Hong Kong. But uh, you could use this in uh, moderate climates. 
Um, it, it's not that expensive, like a CCF facade, and it does work. Um, this was uh, the design effort before is high, absolutely higher because we have to calculate uh, the application. We need the boundary conditions, where it's implemented, and, uh, and how it works. We had to find uh, a filter system, and uh, we have the same boundary conditions for the interior materials to be fogging resistant. An example of a self-conditioning facade is in London. That was the principal place with uh, Foster, Norman Foster, where we have the upper story, eight meter high self-conditioning elements fully installed and uh, it's proper functioning and beautiful application. Especially if you don't have a huge high-rise building where a CCF might be reasonable because the costs versus square meter is not that high. But if you have only few, few stories it sometimes doesn't make sense to, to install a CCF system. So, these are the main highly engineered facade types, CCF, SCF, with its advantages and disadvantages, uh, high technolo technological effort, high engineering effort, uh, maintenance effort, and so we, were, we weren't satisfied and we wanted to find a better solution. So we thought we want an independent system that is nearly closed, more closed than the SCF system, and more closed than the CCF system. So uh, we thought we, we will deal with higher loads, with higher thermal loads, so to resist the glass and all the bonding. But we, had to, we found out by calculations that we need to find something because the climate loads will definitely get too high. So, so we allow for a certain amount uh, of, of breathing of the facade if we exceed the allowable loads by uh, implementing a capillary system. So we can absolutely control when this capillary is opening and when it's working. And this was then the, the birth of the isoshade. Uh, but uh, with this breathing, we had one disadvantage we could get, especially in the night time when you have suction, you get humidity inside the cavity. It's only a very small amount. It's a controlled amount and we got rid needed to get rid of this. So uh, we implemented desiccant inside the framing system, which is capable enough to capture this and keep it constantly dry. First, we calculated this based on uh, assumptions. We uh, made algorithms. We calculated different uh, theories. And then once we had the first prototypes, we tested them, long-term testing one year with the Fraunhofer, IFT. And because uh, what we had to do is we had to compare our calculations, algorithms to the real-time testing. So we overlaid it, and, and we found out that our algorithms were perfectly right. I show later on then the graphs showing these. So the isoshade, just a quick explanation how it works. Uh, this is, as you see, it looks like an oversized IGU, nothing else. That's what it is. You can have this as a product, like an oversized IGU, and you put it somewhere in a framing, or you can have it as a project-based, uh, ready, uh, unitized facade system. So what do we have? We have a framing all around, which is uh, put full of uh, desiccant. We have a sun shading device, vertical blinds, Venetian blinds, which can be installed. And we have uh, allow for maintenance access because uh, it was important for us if there is a failure in the system or if you want to replace something inside the system because the, the blinds, you get better blinds on the market. You want a very easy access, so we have a maintenance access on the back, which is uh, connected with a dry gasket, which makes it even for a maintenance in the building, not for the facade construction company, easy to replace the sun shading device very easily. You can open it without having big infiltration. So you can configure it like the specifications require. It's depending the glass type, in the layer, build up, you want a triple IGU, double IGU, what is sufficient. You can have certain amount of colors, color range, but not only black, please, because that uh, uses, uh, will act as a radiator and the temperatures is in all cavity facades mostly the biggest issue. So, and, uh, and, and the protection against condensation is uh, via the capillary system and the desiccant. So, 
this is the different types of blinds you can have. I, w I will have a word later on, on these ones. And now I come to the measurements. What else, what we want to do is we want to transform the facade from analog age to digital age. Because we have thousands of square meters out there. We are still hanging thousands of square meters out there. And the facade, we don't know what the facade is doing, except you have a fatal damage or defect. Because usually we are not using the data. We should use the data. What is happening? Are the calculations correct? What we did in the, in the first instance, what is my facade doing? And why is my facade not interacting with the HVAC system in a building? Because it does make a difference if there is a meeting room with 1,000 people or if it's an empty meeting room. So we need to measure what's happening to be very energy efficient. So what we're doing is our, our facade elements are not just facade elements, which is on off with a the sunshade. They, they, uh, we're part of a, a research program with the government. It's called the Digital Twin. We are one use case. And uh, we have sensors inside our uh, elements, sensoring the dew point, the pressure, interior pressure, temperatures, uh, surface temperatures. And we provide this data on an open source, based on an open source on scaled boxes. And this is not open for the big ones in California to collect the data and get more intelligent than us, but it's for the facility management, for the facade company that we work with the data. So we need to work with the data for the building maintenance as a profit for the company owner, for the, for the owner of the building. And we need this to learn about the facade. What is my facade doing? Is the facade performing as calculated? What is my facade doing after five years? It's also important for the industry, for us, to learn about the facade. And what is more important, uh, to learn about the life cycle of this facade. It makes a difference if someone in an office is never using a sunshade, so there is no requirement to have twice a year maintenance on the, on the blinds to call them. And if someone is exceeding the 20,000 cycles that is already here, you need a maintenance much earlier. So the system can interact and tell you, you need, you need to do something, otherwise in two years we'll have an issue. So this is what we form with our system. So just examples on measurements. That was a very small project in Augsburg. It's a museum. And uh, that's the data collected last year and then spring this year. So we have uh, the relative humidity. The yellow line is uh, the exterior side, the humidity in Augsburg. And the blue line, it's nearly dry. That's the humidity inside our elements. You see, it's, it's really dry. And uh, here we have then the uh, temperatures. It's getting, getting warm during the day. It's getting cold during the night. So we have different sensors. We, we're measuring the exterior temperature, the interior temperature of the building, and the temperature of the cavity. And uh, so what else do we do? We have the, uh, the air pressure. So of course, with a capillary system, you get a typical graph, because if you get the sun is starting in the morning, shining on the facade, the pressure builds up, but the capillary doesn't allow a quick exchange. So there's always a delay, and you can control this. So uh, we need to calculate this, and then we can calibrate and know exactly what is the allowable stress on the glass, what is the allowable stress on the butyl, and what is the required infiltration. The less infiltration we have, the less treatment of the humidity we need to do. And uh, then we have uh, the, uh, the temperature and the dew point. So it was at minus 30, minus 35 degrees. So that's absolutely no risk of condensation. So, and the next one is just uh, to explain the graph. The black line is a calculation, a theoretical calculation if I have a closed cavity and I wouldn't open it. So the stress would definitely exceed the maximum allowable stress of a heat strengthened glass and of the butyl, and therefore we need to do something. So, and we have the blue line and the red line. One line 
is the th theoretical calculation we did with our algorithm, and the other ones is the real testing results. So that's perfect calibrated our software we, we programmed to the real testing results. But this is the, the evidence that we can calculate the requirements of our facade. And we would especially uh, calculate for every project the requirements, because you need the boundary conditions, the, the, the sun hours, where is the building, how is its situation, situation, how is the neighborhood. But we will do this in advance before someone orders this facade. So design and advantages, just a brief one on this museum in Augsburg. That's uh, seven meter high uh, panels. So the first project was uh, unexceptional, again, but we can do this. And uh, the, uh, the museum did uh, a very, very long study for one year. They examined with many consultants different facade types uh, with, uh, with famous light consultants, building physics consultants all around Europe. And the final decision was for our facade type then in all perspectives, so energy consumption, maintenance over the years. So, so was the right decision. And uh, on the right side, you see the maintenance access, which is pretty easy to access for everybody. Even, even I think, in future, we, there's no requirement that the facade company gets out and opens it, but the maintenance. If there's a small introduction, also the building maintenance can do this. So this is a standard size element we had at the bow, shown last year. So it's all tested. We had elements tested with uh, laboratories, with institutes. We have own long-term testings, and it, it, it's, it's perfectly working. So just some brief uh, values. The, the sound transmission values are perfect, of course, based on the build-up of a triple ITU and, uh, and the glass on the exterior side. U values can even be better based on the configuration. And the G value, this is one very uh, important point for us. So we're not putting uh, solar coatings on our glass because we want to have as much daylight coming through the glass as possible and have a high G value in winter times in moderate climates to gain energy inside the building. So we try to avoid this. And for another reason, um, we want to have as much as daylight in because the daylight is very important for the reasons to uh, not use artificial lighting and save this energy, control this light, and because it's for the human health, it's very important to get a, a right amount of portion of daylight. The latest studies were that the, the human, the mankind, has only in average 8% natural daylight per day because everybody is in its apartment, in work, in office, railway stations, cars, so, so and, and, and there's direct and interlink to the health that if there's a lack of natural daylight that this is causing cancer. So there is a requirement not to sit inside dark buildings. So applications fields, definitely on high-rise buildings because uh, with higher getting wind loads in the code and you can't have exterior wind, uh, so, uh, Wind, uh, solar protection, you can't have interior one from an energy point of view, so you need to protect it somewhere in a cavity. So CCF, SCF, isoshade, this is the future of uh, a facade in high-rise buildings. You can have this at a mullion transom facade, you can have it in a unitized facade, or you can have special solutions which I will show, so already the unitized bonded in or structurally glazed designed. So this is just a standard mullion transom facade. We talk to uh, system companies, big ones, so they have already aluminum profiles for it or steel profiles because sometimes in uh, ground floor facades you have high ones and you don't know how to fix these. The museum in Augsburg was also only fixed in top and bottom support and we have a neat silicone structurally glazed joint. Then we have unitized facades, so you can put it like an oversized ITU in a unitized framing system. Or unitized facades, project specific. So we need to fulfill the architectural requirements, otherwise we won't have a chance. And uh, so we can do that. So we use the architectural requirement, the, uh, the aluminum profiles, if aluminum required, and then we can bond them into our system and provide this as a ready finished product on site. That was an application on another project. 
So structurally glazed, uh, like in the museum, vertical joint was only uh, structurally sealed. This one is about the light guidance, about the importance, get light inside the building, even deep inside the building to save in offices, energy, no artificial light re required. Uh, usually you're using these systems also to reflect the solar fraction, the, the, the red fraction of the light out, get the energy away and leave only the blue light, the good light get in. But I've learned today that there is a, that there is a company uh, playing around with uh, using the red fraction to uh, producing energy. So this is the much better field, so I think we will go that way now with the research because uh, it doesn't make sense in, in big cities to reflect all the the infrared light into the space bag. So this will heat up cities. So, But we will follow up maybe in two years in GBD on this one. Yeah, production, lo logistic and installation. What we're doing, we have a absolutely clean room production of our modules, so we get in all components will get into the clean room. We are only using uh, CCF materials, so not all materials are allowed because uh, with, the, with the humidity and the high temperatures, it will definitely cause uh, failures if you're using the wrong materials. You will get fogging, failures in materials. So it's a very sensitive case. And we, we, we take these materials and we unpack them and we treat them only in clean room atmosphere. And once it's sealed, so we, 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 uh, we're bonding it with putile and then with silicone, it gets out on site via truck and it's already a working system. This is one of the big advantages. When, when we did CCF facades, you need already from that stage on temporary air pressure with small units. During, you need to satisfy that during transport on a truck, on a ship, somewhere in the world, this machine does work, you need redundancy if something happens, then you need this connected on site until the final uh, uh, CCF system is installed. But with this one, goes out on site, can be stored on site, ready for installation. And if there's uh, already included a uh, unitized framing system, it's all, all, all ready. All you need to do is place your brackets and hang these ones. On this project in Augsburg, the contract was by a very small metal contractor having no clue about CCF systems, but he was able to take this contract because he, had, he bought a ready system from us. So all he had to do is some structural work. Yeah, design example. This was the, the museum facade. Just get some few expressions, impressions. So the structurally glazed joint. This is feasible. Well, that's it. Now I'm free for questions, or if no questions arise, then go to drink beer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, do we have any questions for Heiko? Oh, really quick. All right. Ah, Nisha. <laughs> Hello. Um, just a really interesting one on the G value, because we've had this on other CCF projects. Is that actually the G value that you're showing? Is that when the blinds are down all the time? Yes, it's, yes. And that the, the lowest one is when the blinds yeah. closed. Because the problem we found was then um, getting the M&E consultant to get their, their Part L model to work, because actually the G value is dynamic. Yes. But that's just a, I just thought I'd raise that with you. That that's actually does become a bit of a problem for the energy modeling. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, we, we could handle that. Yeah. Any other questions for Heiko? Um, you mentioned that the, uh, there are uh, sensors you are mounting in this facade type and you are making make, uh, any uh, monitoring with them. Do you uh, really uh, uh, do that in uh, every element, or do you? Um, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to make this in every element, but yeah. in every f f fraction of the facade, south side, north side, typical, or special. Typical rep rep e represent. Exactly, yes. The f elements, okay. okay. But, but the future with, with better and cheaper sensors will be definitely in every element, yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, thanks. Yeah.
Any other questions? Well, then, let's thank Heiko for a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video, drop us a comment below, and share the video as well, since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click the bell icon. Ciao.